Hey guys, how's it going? Brad Riley here and welcome to this video. Now look, I wanna put it out there. This is probably one of the most valuable videos I've ever put out onto my channel because I'm gonna break down today specifically, like exactly step-by-step step what I did for one of our clients to turn 79,000 into 1.1 million pound over the last 12 months. Um, we're coming up a day away at the time of filming this from exactly a year to the day that we've worked with this client. And again, they are absolutely blown away. Retention has been awesome. We've obviously been together for 12 months and hopefully continue to work together for many years more because of the incredible results that we're getting. So I wanna break that down for you today, exactly step-by-step, step, exactly what we're doing. So hopefully you can implement this into your agency and your clients to make more money, increase retention, get a better service, get more referrals and just grow your business. So if you enjoy this video whatsoever, please drop a like and subscribe if you are new because I'm going to be holding nothing back here today. So as you can see, 79K into 1.1 million, which is well over a million pound in profit generated just from Facebook ads. So the question is, how do we do it? So the first step of this whole process, before we got into our audience testing or anything like that, the first thing we usually do when we go to a new client, work with a new account, is we do a quick fire round of ad testing. Now don't get me wrong, we do constant creative copy angle tests throughout our lifetime with a client. But when we first get started, what we do is we work ads backwards. The reason we do that is because look, we want to find out the best angles, the best creatives, the best copy that hit home with our target audience. Because look, if we have good creatives, good copies, it's going to increase our click-through rate, our ad rankings, our quality conversion engagement rankings are going to go up. We're going to win bids at a lower cost if we get this section right. And look, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how good the audience is. If the ad isn't engaging, it's not going to convert. So it's not really fair to do a massive audience test and test for a bunch of audiences if you yet don't have creative copy and angles that are going to convert these customers. So how do we do this? Well, firstly, we do dynamic testing. We put a ton of different angles. Um, again, when I say angles, what I mean is, let's say I'm selling some make money online program. One angle could be automate your business. The second angle could be laptop lifestyle. The third angle could be make more money. Same product, different angle for it. Again, if you're selling a weight loss product, it could be cut fat fast. It could be lose weight overnight. It could be lose weight and keep it off this time. You know, same product, different angle. All right. So we usually we have an Excel sheet that we have in our agency where we break down a bunch of different, uh, you know, angles, headlines, copy. We put it all out. We kind of brain dump it onto a piece of paper and go ahead, test all of those. Add creatives as well. Not just the, 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 the what goes on in the creative, but the type of creative, right? You know, a carousel, an image, a single image. Is it video? Like, what is it that converts well? And then within that, if single image converts well, cool. What type of, what type of image? An image with text on? you know, uh, like a, a photograph image, what does well, again, worth testing. And then when it comes to copy, you know, does short form copy work? Does long form copy work better? What is it even, you know, what buzzwords will be saying? What call to actions in that copy is converting? So we'll test a bunch of that initially a lot in the beginning. Also throughout the process, we never stop testing this, but in the beginning we do a blitz kind of like dynamic creative test on all of this. And, and same with headlines as well to really see what works. And to, to gauge what is doing well, we look at the click-through rate. That's going to be a huge thing really here. You know, a, a high click-through rate is going to make all the difference because if you can have double the click-through rate, you know, on a certain creative and copy, well, then you're getting twice the amount of people to the website for the, the same cost, essentially. We also look at engagement rankings. So under the uh, ad ranking section, you can look at engagement ranking, and that's how many people are actually engaging with it. Are they clicking the ad, liking, sharing, commenting? If it's a really good creative and good copy, it's going to have more engagement. And then finally, of course, we're going to monitor through the sales that actually come in on the specific ad level to see what it is that's converting. And to be clear here, it's got to be a fair split test, you know, um, to, to ensure that this is all uh, like a complete fair test, right? So just bear that in mind. You've got to make sure that you are testing, you know, um, that's why dynamic creative works really well because it's going to give you all, the, all of those stats, all right? So once we've gone through that first step, what is our step two? Next up, we wanna set up those top of funnel 
um, campaigns. And the top of funnel basically means new customer acquisition, acquiring new customers who've never heard about the brand, don't know about the business before. And for most companies, this is the hardest part of a business It's how do we get new customers? Okay. And if you can master this, like for this brand here, you know, this is how we turn like 80K basically into 1.1 million. And you can see here, I've got proof. I've got the screenshots. This is a screenshot of the 73K that we turned into over 900 grand. So out of that 1.1 million, 900,000 of it was from top of funnel because I'm going to show you some other stuff with, with regards to middle and bottom of funnel here in a minute. But top of funnel is how you scale. It's how you grow. It's how you can get to these figures. It's acquiring new customers, which can also hopefully buy from you time and time again. So what do we do with our top of funnel? So when we get our ads that we know work really well, we then go into a massive top of funnel audience test. And again, we always, we're constantly adding in more audiences and testing, but this is a stage we go through in the very beginning where we're gonna chuck a bunch of audiences in there and we wanna find the winning audiences. The ones that work, we're gonna keep in and we're gonna scale. And the ones that don't work, we're gonna shut off. Those are the losers, okay? And the goal with the top of funnel campaign is to make sure you know we, we keep uh, replacing NLE's losers, turning them off and replacing them with new audiences. And again, if they're winners, we can, we can scale those up. And it's really important during this process as well, you know, that we actually monitor ad fatigue and frequency. It's not as simple as just setting up a bunch of top of funnel audiences and never touching them again. It's like, well, let's set these up. Let's keep an eye on the frequency. Let's keep an eye on the ad fatigue. So, you know, just because an audience might work for a month, three months in, it might start to underperform. That is what's called ad fatigue fatigue, that audience is hitting fatigue. So it might be time to, to, ch to change up the audience, change up the ad, all right? So the funnel is key here. So what, what do I mean by as well by cold audiences? It could be interest targeting, demographic targeting, behavior targeting, broad targeting, lookalike audiences. That's all top of funnel. It's, it's basically people cold who don't yet know about the company, all right? By the way, if you get this part right, if you get this top of funnel right, and you can make your, your clients a lot of money off top of funnel, let me tell you, this is going to feed these next sections that I'm going to talk about and you're going to have very happy customers that will stay with you like in this scenario for currently over 12 months. And honestly, I think we're going to be with these guys for dozens of years, honestly, with the kind of results we're getting in the relationship that we have. So just some key points off the back of the top of funnel campaign. Number one, it's incredibly important when you're doing this to understand your customer AOV. Now, customer AOV stands for customer um, average order value. So an average order value is how much on average a customer spends with you. So let's say you sell a pair of shoes for 50 bucks, okay? That doesn't mean every customer that comes to you spends 50, 50 bucks, right? Some people might buy three pairs of shoes, some might buy two, some might buy some extra laces, some accessories, which means on average, the order value that you get per customer differs. Some will spend hundreds, some will spend a couple bucks, right? Now, what is the average? You wanna find out the average because when you're running top of funnel campaign, you need to know, you know, I said about shutting off losers, what makes a loser? How do we decide what ad sets, what audiences to actually turn off? Well, that's gonna come down to the average order value. And look, I'm not gonna go too much in detail about it in this video because I do have another video on the channel that, that goes into a deeper topic on this. So I'll link that down below. But the first thing to is in your onboarding, find out what is the average order value and um, again, go and watch that other video after this video, go and watch that one um, because it's gonna be incredibly important to understand when you should be turning off ads. Next up, which is a key point, these results that we've got for this company are fantastic. It's also an established brand, which helps. You know, they've got everything right. Their website's crushing. They've got, you know, they've got ship, free shipping. They've got all of these other things that help with a successful marketing campaign. And, 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 and as a somebody who runs an agency, let me tell you, my media buyers are very happy when we work with established companies because it's so, implementing all these things I say today are almost guaranteed to work. But sometimes with smaller businesses, startups, you can do all of these things and results might not always get there and, and be as successful as you want them to be. And often that can be down to um, the conversion rate issues on websites. So when you're in these top of funnel campaigns and you're, you're turning on and off ad sets, monitor, view content, add to cart, initiate checkout drop-offs. Like if you're getting 30 add to carts and two, you've had two sales, that's a lot of people adding to cart on the website, but not actually converting. So that could be a problem. Well, no, not that could be, that will be a problem that isn't necessarily down to the advertising. Like you've done your job as an advertiser, you've got them on the website, you've got them all the way to actually add something to the basket and then they don't buy. 
Like if, if you've got 30 in it and, and then say three people are buying, let's say you can just get that, you know, to nine people buy it. You've literally tripled the amount of customers, tripled the return from the same amount of ad spend. That is the power of this. So monitor that. And again, I'm, I'm not just in this video, I wanna be sending you to others because I've got loads of valuable stuff in here, but I also have another video on the channel, which I'll link down below, which explains if you do notice these issues, lots of people add into cart, viewing content, initiating checkout and not buying. There's lots of things you can recommend to your client to improve, to make sure that this is happening. It's a key point I wanted to briefly touch on so you understand um, you know, our thought process that goes into all of this, but it's not something for this video. So after this, I, I really recommend you go and watch those two videos, but I've got a lot more to go through first. Some other key points. One thing at the time of filming this that we're noticing, auto placements are currently working really well. Back in the day, we used to just go in and turn on feeds and leave it on feeds only. This day and age, we're noticing auto placements is key. Let Facebook allocate where to show your ads. Reason being, I don't necessarily love, you know, the instant article and stuff like that, right column. It isn't necessarily the best, don't get me wrong. Feeds for me, it's people are gonna see those ads, but they can occasionally, time to time, pick up really low cost purchases to bring up your overall return. And we're noticing that like, we've actually tested it. We've tested feeds only and like stories in a separate campaign and all this stuff. None of them have got the same kind of results as us just chucking on auto placements as of late. So highly recommend that you do that. Uh, another key point when it comes to that is bottom of this, broad audiences, big audiences are working well. So if you're doing your targeting, don't necessarily just throw on something that's got like a 10,000 uh, seed size as an audience or 50,000. The bigger, the better within reason. Still try and get targeted for sure, but try some bigger, broader audiences. We've noticed, you know, one of the best performing campaigns in this top of funnel campaign is actually just broad. Literally no interest, no nothing, wide open age range, auto placements, and it's just crushing. Facebook learns. Facebook's really good at working with its own data as it learns over time. So as you work with more established clients, just try throwing in some broader audiences in there. We're noticing that it works really well. And especially as you scale, the bigger the audience, the longer lifetime you've got of that, right? Like if you've got an audience of 10,000 people, you're going to shoot through that really quick. And even if it's profitable for like a week or two weeks, it will probably stop after a while. So your life cycle of these bigger audiences, especially as they're dynamically updated over time, can honestly be months. So we've had lots of these ad sets which we've kept on for months and months on end without having to even tweak anything because of how well that they're performing and Facebook's learning and learning and learning and, and, and it's broad and it works really well. So just something to consider. And then stat lookalikes. Lookalike audiences for top of funnel taking quite a dip lately. We've noticed making a, a broad stacked lookalike with a ton of lookalikes all in one ad set um, to broaden up the size of the lookalike and the, the base of the, the actual seed of the audience size uh, is worked way better. And then also rather than just 1% that always used to work best, we've noticed the broadening that up to two, three, four percent lookalike audiences working really well at the minute. So next up, once you get your top of funnel in place, your bottom funnel retargeting, this is your easy low hanging fruit. This is a screenshot to show you the power. The last 12 months, 4.8K into 175 grand at 36X return on investment. So just to run some figures here, that's about 400 pound a month in and 14.6K a month back out. Incredible. And what is bottom of funnel retargeting? Well, it is, as it says on the tin, it's retargeting people who are, have almost purchased, but not quite there. So to show you some examples, here are just three of the ad sets. I've blurred out the names there, but um, these are our low spend, high return audiences. And all of these audiences in bottom of funnel are excluding purchases. So what this allows us to do is, let's say we've got an add to cart 30 day audience, excluding people who have purchased. What that allows us to do is get um, real specific with the type of person who's like this, this close to buying, but didn't. So you can go out there, as we already said, the hardest thing about running a company is acquiring top of funnel customers. So this low hanging fruit there, if you can retarget people who have shown so much in interest, they've been on the website, they've added to cart, but didn't buy. And you can retarget them with maybe a 10% discount code for them to take action. Or maybe not even, a discount code isn't always necessary. You, you can test them up against each other, but even just retargeting to just like refresh their mind and say, hey, purchase this, like touch on a pain point in the copy. Honestly, you'll, you'll notice crazy returns like this. Um, what we tend to do, we've got a bunch of stuff that we go through in our audiences. And a couple of the audiences we're noticing that works really, really well here 
is add to cart retargeting, view content retargeting, and you can even retarget uh, top 10% web visitors. That's one of our secret little hacks, which I'm giving you away here for free today. But honestly, if you have a big client, going in on the people who have spent the top 10% of time on the website, but not purchased, if you've got a company that allows you to have a, a, an audience that actually populates with that, I'll tell you what, that crushes. And you can see here, it doesn't spend a lot. The top audience is 150 quid in, 117x return for 17.6K out. Now look, that's across a year. You can see the date, 22nd of September. It spent 150 pound in a year. That's like just over 10 pound a month. It's spending like 30p a day. But look at the return. It's spending no money, 10 pound a month, but bringing well over a thousand pound a month back out. Like, you know, this is the type of thing, it's real low spend, high return audiences. And, and with this, we've got our retargeting uh, here on CBO. So, you know, it, it spends a, a, a tiny amount and that's just what Facebook thinks, right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna decide to only give this a bit here and there. And um, yeah, you can see the kind of returns that we're getting. And a couple of the other ones, again, add to cart, retargeting, view content, retargeting. And just a tip here as well, be specific with your copy because it will be a pattern interrupt to your potential customers and increase conversions. So just to give you an example, imagine you're scrolling through Facebook and you, you last night you were looking at this big puffer jacket, you went to buy it, but you decided not to. And then you get an ad that says, hey, we noticed you um, visited our website, but you didn't check out. If you check out now, here's a 10% discount code, use code GET10 or whatever, right? Like, what are the chances that you convert? Oh, damn it, I was gonna buy that anyway. 10% discount, add a bit of scarcity, discount available, um, uh, like discount only uh, shown on this ad. You know, you won't get it anywhere else. It's like, oh, damn it, I need to make a note of this. Let me go, let me go and buy it. Increase the urgency, increase, uh, increase the conversions massively because you're, it's a pattern interrupt, first of all, because you're saying, look, I noticed you visited our website, but you didn't check out. I'm thinking, like, before I become a media buyer and I had an agency, I was like, what on earth, how on earth do you know this? It's a pattern interrupt. And if you follow that up with an offer, then God, you're gonna notice massive, massive uh, return on investments like you can see here. And just another tip as well, you know, you, you wanna test different uh, date ranges, right? Like you can try add to cart seven day, 30 day, 60 day, but just work backwards. Don't go in and say, right, don't start on like 60 day and then say, oh cool, I'm on a 5X, cool. Well, that could be on a 5X, but realistically it could be on a 10X in the first 30 days, and then you're actually getting no sales from 30 to 60 days. But you're just looking at that thinking, yeah, that's profitable. That's not plugging all the holes to become the absolute best, the upper echelon, the top of the top. You wanna get every bang for your buck, every penny back out you, you possibly can for your clients. That's how you get these crazy return figures here by being that, kind of specific with it and, and, and not letting any penny drop where possible. So work backwards, try 30 days. If 30 day works, then try a 45 day excluding the 30, just to see if those 15 days pull in any sales. If they do, you can chuck that in. So you have a 45 day retargeting, go back to 60, 90, 180, and just test it that way. And um, yeah, you'll uh, you will increase your return on investment over time by doing so. Next up, middle of funnel. So these are people, again, who are warm, they know about the business, they may have gauged with you in some form or another, but they may not have actually purchased from you. So in this scenario, what we're targeting here, um, you can see in the last year, again, a very small spend. They've not got the massive, they've got not got a huge, huge social media audience. So it's only spent 935 pound in this last year, but it's brought just shy of 40K out, you know? 900 in, 40K out at a 41X return. What's mad though, this is even higher than our bottom of funnel retargeting. Probably due to the amount that it's spent, it's really not spent very much. Frequency is quite low, but all we've done here in this is, is we've retargeted Instagram engagement and Facebook engagement. So people who are liking, commenting, sharing, following the page, showing an interest in the brand, retargeting them ads of the products, boom. You know, really fantastic, incredible. So even if you have a climb, like in this scenario, they've got a decent sized audience. It's not It's not hundreds of thousands though. If, if you have a client that's got social media, even if they don't have tons of engagement, whack it on a dollar a day and just test it because it will likely be one of those ones with very small spend, but pretty high return. And you know, when you're testing in the beginning and you're doing these top of funnel audiences, you know, maybe you're getting towards break even, these little bottom of funnel, middle of funnel audiences and campaigns are gonna be what actually can bring you above overall break even return for your total campaign and keep a client there. So this is why it's super important. And then finally, another one for you, 
post-purchase campaigns to increase lifetime value. This one spent even less, 856. The return's nothing crazy. It's only 11.8K compared. So it's like a 13, 14X return. Still fantastic, don't get me wrong. Not as good as like the 40X we've just seen. But like I've put here, plug in or holes, no matter how small. This is spent about 70 quid a month. So it's spending about two pound a day right now, but it's bringing in about 1,000 a month. It's nothing crazy, but you know, bringing in a thousand extra a month from here, three K extra a month from here, three K extra, four K extra a month from here. Before you know it, you've added an extra hundred grand a month in revenue that you're generating for that client because these small little things add up. And what we've done here in our post-purchase campaign was just implement lifetime purchases that had been tracked on Facebook and then a customer email list. And again, when I say customer email list, I actually mean customer email list, not just a general email list with a bunch of people on there. These are people who have been segmented, it's people who have actually bought uh, from the from this company before, and bought from my client before. And what you can do if you're really smart um, is you can actually go ahead and add values to certain people within your customer email list. So, you know, if you have some real smart email marketing software, you can say, look, I wanna segment like the top 10% of people who've spent the most money from me, put that into an email list, chuck that onto Facebook, use that in a post-purchase campaign, and your return on investment will skyrocket through the roof. You could create lookalike audiences from it, and boom, there you have it. Really good way to scale up. Now look, as I've said, if you get optimal results for your clients like this, you will skyrocket to the top 1% of agencies overnight. And when I say top percent, 1% of agencies, I literally mean you'll be the best of the best if you just implement these simple campaigns and structures into your agency and for your clients, you'll get better results, which means better retention. Better retention means more money in your pocket. More money in your pocket means you can scale, you can hire more people, you can offer a better service. Again, better results for your clients means the clients are happier, which means you'll get more referrals. Like it's it just, there's endless opportunities if you have a return on ad spend type deal and you're getting results like this, you're gonna make more money upfront in terms of a performance based fee. Like it's so, so important to do this. And that's exactly why we've actually gone ahead and created our white label service at your marketing partners to help agency owners do just that, get to the top, uh, the top of the top when it comes to their service delivery. So if you are interested, you know, just cause I know how viable it is to have a good media buyer in your team. If you're interested in seeing how we can work with you and your agency with our UK based media buyers to offer white label services, uh, Facebook ad services for your clients. We do Slack communication. We we, um, we do all the management of the ads, the spit tests and everything we basically discussed here, we would do for you and your clients. If you're interested, you can apply down below. We are limited um, due to the, the quality of the service and everything, but you can apply down below. And if you're a good fit, it would be awesome to work together. But there you have it. Put it all out on the plate, exactly how we made over a million pound in profit for one of our clients in the last 12 months. Probably one of the most valuable videos i put out. I hope you enjoyed it. Drop a like if you did, because I'm giving all this info away for free. So if you did find value, a like would just show some appreciation and it means a ton. Thanks so much and I'll see you in the next video.